We're back at it with the constipation series. Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be talking about probiotics for constipation. Now, here's the thing. I might know what you're thinking. You might be thinking, all right, she's just going to tell us about BioGaia for the 8 millionth time. It didn't work for me or I can't take it for whatever reason. Snooze onward. Nay, my friends. I mean, I like BioGaia. Don't get me wrong. It's a good product. It works really, really well for methane induced constipation. However, there are other reasons why you could be constipated, and therefore, there are other solutions available to you. So, I'm not going to talk about the research on BioGaia at all in this video, and I'm going to focus on a few different probiotics, three in particular, that you might not have realized are widely available at your pharmacy or at your grocery store and very, very effective and well-documented to treat constipation. So without further ado, let's get into some nerdy, nerdy research. Now, the goal in this video is not even to prove to you that probiotics can be helpful for constipation because that has been proven many times over. But just for funsies, I'm going to link a couple of systematic reviews and meta-analyses down in the description, and I'll show you the most recent one just for fun. So this was published in January of 2024. It's hot off the press. And if you scroll down, their conclusion was probiotics containing products significantly increased stool frequency, improved stool consistency, and alleviated functional constipation symptoms. They increase the relative abundance of the specific strain. That's not a surprise. If you put it in your mouth, you would think that it would come out your butt. And more high quality head to head randomized controlled trials are needed. They put that at the end of every one of these studies. That's just their way of saying, hey, let's not stop researching it. Let's do more. But they said it helps in increase the frequency of BMs. It helps with the consistency, think like Bristol stool scale, and it helps alleviate the symptoms like straining and pain that is associated with constipation. So probiotics work pretty much across the board, I might add. But again, there are a couple of probiotics that are readily available in your grocery store or in your pharmacy that have a lot of backing with constipation specifically. And that's what I wanted to share with you. So without further ado, let's get into the first one. And that is Bifidobacterium lactis DN173010. This is the strain that's used in Dan and Activia. Activia. Acti okay, I forget the song clearly, but you could be like Jamie Lee Curtis. You too could poop like Jamie Lee Curtis if you wanted to. So here's just one study. I'm going to link more in the description for those of you who are nerds. But if you scroll down here, this is the part that I thought was really intriguing. So they said between the treatment group and the placebo group, there was no significant difference at baseline. They said following consumption of test product, stool frequency was significantly increased after one week and two weeks versus baseline. But if you look at baseline, these people were having 2.4 bowel movements per week. And after two weeks of the probiotic intervention, they were already up to having 4.1 bowel movements per week that's tremendous. That's huge, right? Like if you could have double the bowel movements right now, wouldn't you want that? No, they're not up to normal yet. We would like those people to get up to at least seven or eight BMs a week, but my God, we will take that as a win. So this is just one of several studies that Dan and Activia actually has going for it. If you don't want to eat this product, because I will admit it's a little bit sugary for my taste personally, and you don't get very much for the money. What I have had some people do is use a store-bought yogurt like this or the next one I'm going to talk about. Use that as a starting culture to make your own yogurt at home. So that could be a Band-Aid kind of workaround. Or if you're dairy intolerant and you can't get this in the yogurt itself, make a couple batches of homemade yogurt. And after a while, you're going to have watered down the dairy so much that it should be basically dairy-free after a few rounds of making your homemade yogurt. Pretty cool. Moving on, though. This is what I really wanted to highlight because there are two studies that I thought were really cool and really like pretty convincing. This was one of them. So probiotic beverage containing lactobacillus casei shiorta. So this is, or shiorta, sorry. This is the probiotic strain that's in Yakult Yakult yogurt products. And it says that it can improve gastrointestinal symptoms in patients with chronic constipation. Now, you could come down here and you could see, for example, that in the final examination, 89% of people in the probiotic group and 56% of people in the placebo group showed a positive effect from the beverage on constipation. 
So still outperformed placebo by a fair margin, but also look at placebo go, the power of our mind, am I right? But if we pull up the actual study, this is the chart. This is the table that I think is really compelling. So if you look, for example, at defecation frequency, which is right here where my cursor is, you can see that at baseline, all of the people were having about three bowel movements per week with the range being two to five. And then after the treatment, in the treatment group, they were up to having six bowel movements per week. Now keep in mind, this was not a super long study, right? Like four weeks, whoop de freaking do right? So they're doubling the number of bowel movements that they're having per week, which is pretty wild. Now, again, look, the power of the mind. If you go over one more, uh, one more column, we could see that the placebo group had five bowel movements per week. Well, isn't that interesting? They got a pretty good benefit. But here's where the probiotic really outshines the placebo. If you come down, the one underneath that, occurrence of hard stools as a percentage of the total number of stools. In the beginning, 94% of people reported having hard stools versus after four weeks on the probiotic, only 29% of people in the treatment group reported having hard stools and 82% in the placebo group still reported hard stools. So yes, the placebo was helping people poop more frequently but it wasn't necessarily alleviating the hard stools and the compacted stools that we see in constipation. So clearly the probiotic was outperforming the placebo. Pretty wicked. Now let's move on because there's actually another one I wanted to show you with Yakult Yakult yogurt. So this is another study, fermented milk containing lactobacillus casei shirota, uh, reduces incidence of hard or lumpy stools in healthy population. So these people supposedly had no GI issues going on. They weren't necessarily IBS patients or anything like that. But as we know, a pretty fair amount of the general population is at least mildly constipated. And so they were watching things like stool consistency and frequency in this supposedly healthy normal control group. Similarly, you can take a little bit away from the, the PubMed listing. But if you go into the actual PDF, this is what I thought was cool. So come down here below my head and the number of bowel movements in the treatment versus control group. So if you look at baseline at week one, 6.2 versus 5.9, that's really not any different. And then if you look, the treatment group goes from 6.2 all the way up to 7.9 BMs per week. So they're pooping twice a day in some cases, which is pretty great versus the control group, which went from 5.9 to 6.0. So really that did not change. Then come down here, CBM is complete bowel movements. Anybody who struggled with constipation knows that that's the moneymaker. Those are the money beats. That's what you actually want. It's one thing to say that you pooped, but if it's just a rabbit turd or a marble, that's not really anything to write home about. But the number of complete bowel movements you have per week is very noteworthy. And similarly, if you look at week one, there's really no difference between the two groups, 3.2 versus 3.5. But if you follow this over, the treatment group who received the yogurt went from 3.2 complete bowel movements per week all the way up to 5.3. Think about that. If you're dealing with constipation now and you're pooping three times a week on your own, wouldn't it be lovely to get two more healthy complete bowel movements in your week? That is a heck of a lot closer to normal. Versus, again, look, the control group, they went from 3.5 to 3.9. So really not a huge difference with the control group. The probiotic is clearly changing something. Pretty cool. So there's the first two. So we've got Dan and Activia. Again, you could be like Jamie Lee Curtis. Number two are the two studies for Yakult Yakult yogurt. And again, both of these yogurts are widely available in grocery stores, at least in the United States. So you could walk right into, you know, your Wegmans or your Harris Teeter or whatever, and you could probably get these things. Or let me show you another one. And this is going to be available at nearly every pharmacy, again, at least in the States. So change in fecal flora and effectiveness of the short-term VSL number three probiotic treatment in patients with functional constipation. Now, here's something you need to know. VSL number three, I forget the whole story. There was drama with this company, okay? And what they used to call VSL number three no longer goes by that name. 
The thing that you can get as VSL number three of the pharmacy is not the same thing that's in the study. What you want to look for is VisBiome, V-I-S-B-I-O-M-E. VisBiome is the old VSL number three formulation, and that's the one that has a lot of research behind it. But continuing, look at this. So this is a two-week trial of taking VSL number th- or the old VSL number three. This is a really high dose. This I found very fascinating. So I don't think it's on this front page, but basically this group was taking 450 billion CFU twice a day for two weeks. So they hit this super heavy for two weeks, and that was the duration of the study. So this is like the ultimate probiotic sledgehammer as opposed to, you know, the counts that would be in those yogurt products. But similarly, let's come over here. If you look at the study, so here in this uh, figure three, again, complete bowel movements per week, uh, complete, complete spontaneous bowel movements, I should say, per week. And you can see clearly the trend is going upward and looks great. If you come down here and read underneath, under where it says figure four, sorry, not three, under where it says figure four, you can see that they went from 2.5 complete spontaneous bowel movements per week up to 6.3 complete spontaneous bowel movements per week. Again, if you're pooping two, maybe three times a week on your own, wouldn't it be lovely to be pooping six or perhaps seven days a week all on your own? Huge, hugely effective. And if you come over here too, I've got to scroll slightly to get my head out of the way. But also under stool consistency, they say that the mean Bristol scores in constipated patients were significantly higher after VSL number three ingestion for two weeks. I can't remember. This is only two weeks. So the Bristol school, Bristol school, stool, oh my God, this Bristol stool scale rating. There we go. Uh, Four is normal. Anything less than four is constipation. Anything higher than four is diarrhea, right? Well, if you look after just two weeks on VisBiome, they were up at 4.1 for their Bristol stool score. And the baseline before ingestion of that, they were at a 2.6. So these people started out with Bristol stool poops of a two or a three. And then by the end of the two-week intervention, they were having nice, fluffy, normal, smooth sausage or snake-like poops at a Bristol stool. Oh my God, this is hard today. A Bristol stool score of 4.1. How cool is that? I think it's really freaking cool to tell you the honest to God truth. I mean, these are probiotics that you could just waltz into your local Kroger and purchase and nobody's doing it. Or at least I should say nobody that I have worked with has been on these probiotics prior to me working with them, but maybe for a good reason, right? Like the people who found these probiotics no longer have constipation and therefore they wouldn't come work with me anyway. So maybe this is a selection bias thing. But my point is, I really think that probiotics in general, but especially these three, are underutilized, under-respected tools in your constipation journey, and they have such good evidence. We should be using these more often. So by all means, go to your store, go try one of these out, see which one sticks for you, which one ends up being the winner for you. Um, I Again, I think that it would take years and years to really cover this in any depth, but I am going to provide some more links down in the description of other strains and other types of bacteria that have been shown to alleviate constipation. This is far from a complete list. These are just the three that I wanted to highlight today, but there are plenty more. And I've linked a couple of those links as well as some of the meta analyses and systematic reviews down in the description below. Here's the question though. What if you're a bit more complicated than the average bear watching this YouTube video with constipation? What if you have IBS-C and you also struggle with abdominal pain and bloating and fullness after your meals? What if you have SIBO and that's methane SIBO and nothing you've tried has licked the methane? What if you have other symptoms like hypothyroidism or you're on a restricted diet that's lacking in fiber and you know that's the root cause of your constipation, but no matter how much you try, you can't get off that restricted diet? What if you're one of these people who's tried probiotics a few times and you always react poorly to them and now you're feeling stuck? Well, if any of those scenarios sound like you, I would encourage you to check out FODMAP Freedom. FODMAP Freedom is my group coaching program. We run it a couple of times a year and it is a super intensive group coaching environment. 
So there are videos kind of like YouTube, but a little bit more in depth and more nerdy. There are videos that you watch on your own time every week. And then you go to the live Q and A's. Typically we have four to six live Q and A's per week. And you get to go to those live Q and A's or email in with our support line and ask your questions and really digest the material, pun intended, and make it applicable for you and your circumstances and your life. So yeah, maybe this is great information for a broad audience here on YouTube, but if it's not tailored to you and you're feeling like you need that and you need the assistance, you need some handholding and some guidance, come on over to FODMAP Freedom. I would be happy to help you no matter what your constipation or GI struggles might be. I have a lot of expertise in helping people with IBS and SIBO and FODMAP Freedom carries a 100% money back guarantee. If it does not radically transform your gut health, I will give you 100% of your money back. And I don't know a better deal than that. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.